ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, um, now let's take a look to Nepal. Um, very short introduction, uh, introduction to the uh, Nepal Temple Project. Um, it's an international and interdisciplinary campaign with uh, combined under the umbrella uh, of the University of Kiel, cultural historical research, archaeology, restoration, and restoration in Nepal. So we have a very strong uh, working program um, since uh, 2015, and now um, the money runs out, and um, I think in 2019 we are finished, and also I'm finished with the publication. Um, at first, um, let me say uh, some words to the political frameworks. Uh, we started in 2015 in Nepal, and there was a great struggle between Nepal and um, uh, India. In summary, uh, the border was closed and everything is shut down in Nepal. And second, uh, the big earthquake in 2015. Um, great, great um, problems in every time. So, um, the Ananta Lingeshwara Mahadeva Temple is located about 20 kilometers southwest of Bhaktapur. Bhaktapur is one of the old um, king of cities in the valley of Kathmandu, uh, in the center of Nepal, surrounded with mountains. Um, maybe two hours by feet from Bhaktapur in this direction, this is our temple site. Um, the temple is built on a man-made terrace um, on an altitude of um, 1,457 meters. Um, and it's built on a square plan based um, on the cosmic mandala. The plan uh, of this temple is strictly orientated to the cardinal directions, usually along the east-west axis. Uh, this temple carries the heaven to the earth and transmits the divine laws to the mankind. But we see um, here the building's deviation from the north-south axis and not exactly in the right direction. So this is a, a picture of before we start our work from the February 2015 on the most important part of this place, the West Wall. Um, this was our first place we took. Um, yeah, we began our work. Um, what is so important about this West Wall? Um, if we start our work, we don't know so much about conditions and uh, measurements and so on and so on. And um, now we know we have a thickness of over two meters, a brick wall with a thickness of over two meters. So now we know it is one of the thickest brick walls in whole Nepal. Um, here we have an isometric view of the western borderline of the temple square or excavation area with the places for ancestral worship. At first, we found a big brick debris layer in this place. At second, under this layer, we found a small structure like an altar. And now Mr. Barat find, found <laughs> in this small structure um, a secondary used relief, um, so-called torana. Torana is a decorated lintel in this context. Um, a turan, um, this Torana was indeed a very surprising bombshell. Of course, this Torana is from the Likavi time, maybe between the 6th and the 8th century. And we have so much of this in Nepal. Now, um, at the southern end of the West Wall, we are able to excavate a fountain from the 17th century. Um, the deep of the well, only 1 meter 15, um, and its location next to uh, a year-round water bearing source suggests use for cult purposes. But 
to our great disappointment, the fountain was filled only with recent ceramics and some coins from the late 70s. Um, Another very exciting place was the square around the Eastern Temple access, uh, right at the entrance uh, to the Temple Plateau. Uh, two founders daily, located with, uh, we dated to the seventh century. Um, this so-called Chilapatra bears the symbol of the King Narendra um, recumbent bull. The bull is the vehicle of Lord Shiva and a symbol of the moon, and as well for recreation in Hinduism. And what he said on this day is, I came to this place, King Narendra Deva. I came to this place and saw that my predecessors had failed. Everything was in bad condition. But now everything was good because I'm here and I give slaves, rice, and priests to this place. This is a strong indication that this place was very important, was very important long before King Narendra Reva. So we are able to, in, to identify one of the oldest permanently used Nepali cold places. Close to the Shilapatra, uh, the visitor is welcomed by two Nagas. Nagas are symbols of cosmic energy. Um, ah, okay. Sorry, this was a test. <laughs> okay, and close uh, to these nagas are um, um, two lion guards figures um, in the entrance. In Hinduism, the lion um, is um, the guardian of the universe. This symbol is a part of every Hindu temple in South Asia. Um, we have two lion guards, one male and one female. This is the male. <laughs> So, then um, at first you were welcomed at, at the plateau um, seven shrines uh, of different ages. This was a shrine of the 17th century and uh, um, more than three meters high, um, guarded by the vehicle of uh, Lord Shiva, a bull. In addition, um, we are able to identify one of um, the few surviving Likavi shrines in Nepal. This is one of these on our temple plateau. Most of Likavi times um, uh, artifacts are destroyed or secondary used. Here we have one in original condition. Um, the main temple is from the end of the 19th century, uh, which is domed and is an example uh, of uh, the adaption of uh, British building techniques in Nepal. Um, I think um, he's heavily destroyed uh, during the earthquake and so on. So, our most important source about the younger history of this site are the inscriptions. In addition, we have uh, more than 10 uh, inscriptions from different times, uh, from the beginning of the 17th century to the 19th century. Um, an important example is the inscription of, um, from a male uh, ancestor figure. The uh, statue was located close to the um, north end of the western wall. And uh, the translation of uh, this inscription sent us to uh, maybe 1648. So uh, you, you can imagine this is not the real head of this figure. Um, as we think uh, the real head of this figure uh, was in the property of some wealth tourists. So, conclusion. The 
Another language of Mahamadeva Mahadeva temple is one of the oldest permanently used cult places in Nepal. Um, and it is one of the most important sites of the carving art in the Kathmandu Valley. We haven't so much of these. Um, foundation in the Likavi period between the 5th and the 7th century, we think so. And the oldest preserved architecture is from the Mala dynasty, 12th century. And uh, then we have an extensive renovation in the 16th century. And the main temple is from the 19th century. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of um, support for our team, um, whole, whole Germany and all over the world. And we must say thank you very much for all these people who engaged us. So um, if you have further questions, um, please contact me. I think the publication uh, in the uh, German publication, Zeitschrift für Außereuropäische Archäologie, wird and it is, um, it's, it's publicated uh, in, in end of the year. Thank you very much.